technology is persistent, it's systematic, it's pervasive, but not all firms adopt technology. Right? Ten years ago, you would not have said, would you have said that a taxi service is a, is a competitor to a General Motors or an, a Toyota or a Mahindra? Would you have said that ten years ago? If a firm is evaluated for their current profits, they might face constraints in investing in the future. Large language models that really changed the way we interacted, took it to a completely different level. I don't know what I don't know. Uh, and and feel comfortable in your skin uh, with, with, with that uh, is, 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 is terribly important. Our talk is based on two observations. First, that technology is pervasive, it's systematic, and it's persistent. There's a lot of technological change that we are living through. And, uh, you know, this is not new. This has been uh, evolving, but it's been evolving at a very rapid pace over the last few years. So that's the first observation that we will demonstrate to you with some, you know, with, with the research, both ours as well as other uh, literature. The second observation that we have for you uh, that our talk is based on is that um, technology adoption is, especially of radical technologies, is rare. Right? So technology is persistent, it's systematic, it's pervasive, but not all firms adopt technology. In fact, the most persistent trend is the inability of incumbents to respond when technologies and markets change. So, you know, this was the year 1857. Uh, you know, your boss said that Alexander Graham Bell has invented a way to transmit voice over wire. What should we do? Uh, Western Union at the time dismissed Bell's innovation as a toy. And Western Union was not the first company to do that and certainly not the last. The tech industry, the software, hardware, communications, connectivity, or the companies that are producing these technologies are central to innovation processes. That is, their patents are being cited across diverse industries and diverse firms, which is tech is increasingly central to innovation. If tech goes down, the tech industry goes down, tech firms go down, there's a lot of innovation overall that systemically gets affected. So if 10% if of my patents were tech patents, my car was largely a bundle of mechanical components. Today, if 40% of my patents are tech patents, then my car is essentially software, right? So my car is essentially, my products, my processes are all becoming incredibly tech-centric, right? This is important because products define business models, right? And therefore, if your product is changing, your business model is also changing. And you can think now about how the business models in the automobile sector have evolved over time. Right? Ten years ago, you would not have said, would you have said that a taxi service is a, is a competitor to a General Motors or an, a Toyota or a Mahindra? Would you have said that ten years ago? Perhaps not. But would you say it today? Would you say that Uber is a legitimate competitor for the, you know, the Toyotas of the world? You would say yes. So the fundamental thesis is that shareholders play a key role in shaping firm strategies. And why would that be? Well, you can think about the shareholders of incumbents as one of the owners of the firm. And these owners of the firm tend, just like all of us do, tend to evaluate the performance of companies by thinking about how legitimate are these strategies, right? So by legitimacy, I mean that whether they conform to shareholders' expectations or not. If a firm is evaluated for their current profits, they might face constraints in investing in the future. To summarize, Right. Uh, it's not. Yes, of course, it, there is a difficulty in adopting new ideas or new technologies, but just as important or difficult is escaping from old ones. Right. So a very wise man, John Maynard Keynes said that. Ganesh, we'll start with you. Tell us about some exemplar product, organization, business model that you believe is radical innovation, is changing the landscape of you know, an incumbent industry or function. Okay, I mean, this is a, the answer to this can be a full course at ISP. Correct. Okay, right. So, so, but I'll try to, in the interest of time, I'll try to uh, shorten it. So, uh, I'll take example of Verloop.io. So, that's an AI ML company uh, that uh, is about seven years, uh, seven years old. We started as a uh, company that will help customer service automation. Okay, right. Make customer service more efficient. Uh, the first customer was Nika. All of you know this for customer service for Nika because uh, and both customer service and for uh, sales support. So when it started, it is traditionally using the old machine learning techniques and models. So what was that? So it had a product that 
basically help people could uh, interact with it in chatbot if people had a question they can ask a question it was primarily driven by keywords you whatever customer is asking or a potential sales person is asking look at the keyword and based on that uh, give a response because i mean how, how many things will a, will a customer ask so have a list have the keyword and keyword response so that was the first first of all thing it was great it saved about 30% about 20 to 30% uh, of the queries balance 70% was transferred to a customer service agent so that was the version 1 of the product then technology changes came all of you know about google's white paper about transforma that transformed the aml space so that helped in changing the product to a next level and what was the level now suddenly you don't have to have keywords uh, from the customer you could understand customers queries in slightly more natural language with higher level of accuracy see customers don't think of queries as keyword they have a problem i am not able to get this i did not get that they don't press keywords the only other solution that was to have ivr all of you must be familiar with ivr press 1 press 2 press 3 and all that stuff now that's not the way customer reacts so transformer came and transformers what did it, it took it to a next level the next level was that you could get free format queries but still had a problem the responses were still templatized you had to have standard response you have to respond and what did we do in order to make it slightly less templatized for everything we would have three responses three templates of responses and used to serve those templates on a random basis so that you don't see the same monotonous response next time when you come you will see this two or third of the three responses that is there but still very very clunky then you had this generative ai come up that completely transformed to use the same transform thing completely transformed now suddenly you could have free flow free format queries free format responses the ability to understand came up as a result of your ability to compute large language models that really changed the way we interact it took it to a complete different level so the latest valoo.io product and we did the same thing with nike at multiple levels okay right 1 2 3 and the last point in this because of this llm what we are able to do for queries and all that we are able to do 100% quality control so i wanted to get a sense since you are in a leadership position with microsoft i wanted to get a sense of how do you know what are certain things that leaders can actually do um to sort of smoothen the adoption especially when there is a discontinuous shift right in in technology right so what are some of the things that in your opinion might actually work has worked for a company like uh, microsoft which has made a lot of these discontinuous changes themselves is something uh, that i just wanted uh, to hear from you yeah i think um look the the nature of leadership in uh in not just tech sector but across businesses is uh is really changing i mean i think leaders in in uh, and i look at many leaders who i look up to the idea of know it all is gone the leaders generally have to be people who are uh, what you may call servant leadership right i think the uh, the ability to say that uh, i don't know what i don't know uh, and and feel comfortable in your skin uh, with 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 that uh, is 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 terribly important um to to me that becomes one uh, mantra that i think about on an everyday basis uh, you know the, the pace at which things have changed in the last uh, uh, you know one and a half two years uh, is you know people even anybody who's been in the world of uh, you know hardcore ai research for decades has been surprised thank you rohini there was a fantastic closing <laughs>